Michaels that have saying this Corinna and others who are saying, look, this is this is this was the the moment that we needed because now it can give us the momentum that we needed. Do you think that can happen at this point? It can give us the momentum that we needed, but if you make this a black issue, you're gonna lose again. Because what's missing, the missing element from this, and if you if you watch Representative Jim Jordan, uh, who chairs the Judiciary Committee in the House of Representatives, he's out of Ohio. He was on Meet the Press uh, with uh, uh, this past Saturday on NBC, and he said he doesn't think uh, any laws could be passed that would have stopped what happened to uh, Tyree Nichols uh, to, to, uh, from happening. And he voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. What's missing is that each year. There are more white people that each year there are more white people killed by police in America than African Americans. Mm -hmm. Are we disproportionately killed by police? Yes. But if you make this just a black issue, you're going to lose, especially when you go to the Senate. The Senate is 95 percent white. There's only two and a half black people in the entire U.S. Senate. And I say half because Senator Tim Scott, Black Tea Party Republican for South Carolina, half the time he doesn't act like he's black. And he's the one who blocked the George Floyd. But here's the thing, talking about a multifaceted approach, Brother David, and, and bringing institutions as well as organizations, as well as the community. And 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 I think that is part of the, the, the challenge that's facing us right now, Brother Michael, is that if we're trying, like, I think the big challenge is the culture challenge, like making sure that our people see this as a call to action rather than just another moment. We'd be like, damn, that's messed up what happened to that man. Like getting out of that level of, of sentiment, moving into a space where we're saying, you know what? Tyree Nichols is going to be the last black man killed by police. That's a whole different energy, Brother Michael. Talk to me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me for Raji and Hotep yes, to everybody. So yes, as, I, as I've said many times before, and as uh, the panel has echoed here, um, we, we, we're dealing with politics, okay? And we have to understand that politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of law, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. So our understanding of politics is directly related to our understanding of history. Unfortunately, one, Americans are very ignorant of history. One, two, African-Americans are even more ignorant of history than the average American. So this and this is why we have to understand. I'm speaking generally speaking now. Uh, there are exceptions to the rule. So this is why we have to understand that this has to be more than a moment. It has to be a sustained movement, but mm -hmm. it has to be a movement that understands history, law, politics, and economics. Because what we saw after George Floyd and also after uh, there was a also after there was a settlement for the George Floyd fa family, rightfully so, rightfully deserved. And then there was conviction of uh Derek Chauvin and then other uh officers involved. Then then we saw things die down. Now I'm not saying people who were at the forefront or people who were out protesting through the summer. I'm not saying they weren't committed, but the, the, but the sustained fight, the, the sustained movement to understand what are the next steps, okay? This is something that was lacking. And then the other thing was there's a lack of com there was a lack of commitment from uh we look when we look when the uh, George Floyd Justice of Policing Act uh, passed the House of Representatives, all the Republicans voted against the bill. Two hundred and twelve Republicans voted against the bill after they talked about how horrible it was what happened with George Floyd. Now, those same Republicans have taken control of the House of Representatives. So it's going to be even harder to get something passed. I think well, do you think that will change, yeah. though? I mean, that's a, isn't this the, 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 the this is sort of like uh, the tipping point to get the movement together. And I've seen so many of my online culture crew, Brother Michaels, that have saying this Corinna and others who are saying, look, this is this is this was the the moment that we needed because now it can give us the momentum that we needed. Do you think that can happen at this point? It can give us the momentum that we needed, but if you make this a black issue, you're gonna lose again. Because what's missing, the missing element from this, and if you if you watch Representative Jim Jordan, uh, who chairs the Judiciary Committee in the House of Representatives, he's out of Ohio. He was on Meet the Press uh, with uh, uh, this past Saturday on NBC, and he said he doesn't think uh, any laws could be passed that would have stopped what happened to uh, Tyree Nichols uh, to, to, uh, from happening. And he voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. What's missing 
is that each year there are more white people that each year there are more white people killed by police in America than African Americans. Mm -hmm. Are we disproportionately killed by police? Yes. But if you make this just a black issue, you're going to lose, especially when you go to the Senate. The Senate is 95 percent white. There's only two and a half black people in the entire U.S. Senate. And I say half because Senator Tim Scott, Black Tea Party Republican for South Carolina, half the time he doesn't act like he's black. And he's the one who blocked the George Floyd but here's the thing, act in the here's Senate. The hey, so, brother Michael, but here's, a, here's, a, here's the only pushback that I would have to that. And, and I know we got a moment before we take another pause, but I want to throw this out there. You made this point. You're saying that actually white people are brutalized more than. No, no. Listen to what I'm saying. That every if you go to Fatal Force, Fatal Force is the most comprehensive database of right. police killings in the country. It's from the Washington Post. Right. I look at right. it every right. year. Familiar. Not only does it detail uh, what happened, it also details whether there was body cam footage, cell phone footage. Right. Where is the body cam footage and cell phone footage of white people who are shot okay. and killed That's by police, especially making. unjustly, and, especially and, unjustly, because they have the video. That's the you, and that's the point I was making, Big Brother. That's the that's a, that's exactly the direction I was going to go. That we don't see this level of brutality splashed on 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 websites for white victims. And and this is why. Read the article, one of my favorite articles that I use in my lectures, thinkprogress.org, March 2015. How news outlets convince you that most criminals are black. And what they do, and I'll give you, I'll post the link here. You can bring it up. What it does, it, it was a nationwide study of local uh, news outlets, NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox local news affiliates. And it showed, and it documented how they disproportionately covered stories that had African Americans as the perpetrators in the in, as the perpetrators of crimes in the story, but it was disproportionate to our arrest rate. So we may have been arrested, made made up fifty one percent of arrests, but we made up seventy five percent or seventy percent of the stories dealing with crimes. So what I it mean, does is it creates yeah. this false narrative, and you have a lot of white people in this country, many of them voted to. Put Republicans in control of the House who don't have a problem with over policing of African Americans. But when, when you make this, when you bring white mothers in, talk about how their baby was unjustly killed by police and have them in the Senate. When you bring the Fraternal Order Police in and the, and the International Association of Police Chiefs, because they actually supported the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, bring them in in the hearings in the Senate. Bring them in in the hearings in the House of Representatives because they talked about how the bill did not defund the police. They talked about how it actually funded the police and how it was actually good for citizens as yeah. well as for police officers. They I supported gotta, the bill. I got to take a quick pause. When we come forward, I want to hear from Brother Richard. I want to hear from Brother David. I'm going to share some comments from our online culture crew because we got to have this conversation as we're talking about healing. Moving forward, how do we make sure that Tyree Nichols' death is not one in vain. We'll continue to have the conversation right here on The Culture on the Black Star Network. Folks, welcome back to the show. We've been talking about the case of Tyree Nichols and the aftermath of the release of the video of the five police officers that were seen, or six police officers, excuse me, that were seen on video um, brutalizing our brother and just having a very vibrant conversation with three brothers, dynamic brothers, uh, we are joined by Brother Richard Rowe, who is a race scholar. He's an advocate for Black Mental Health Alliance. And we are also joined by David Miller, who is an author, and he is the founder and creator of the Dare to Be King curriculum. And we also have our brother, Brother Michael N. Hotep, who is host of the African History Network podcast show. Uh, folks, we're going to get to your call and get to, to as many, uh, try to get to some comments. But Brother Richard, going back to what Brother Michael had said about this level of political engagement, right? This George Floyd Justice for Policing Act, this has been certainly something that came out after the George after George Floyd was murdered. Uh, but but I, I still feel like, Brother Richard, and Brother David, I want to get your take on this as well. I still feel like there isn't, we're not seeing the level of push around this bill, which is actually a good start, but this culturally, Black folks, we, we, we're, we're still kind of like a couple of steps behind when it comes to, you know, trying to politicize 
a, a, a situation like this. You know what I mean? Culturally. <laughs> Culturally. Like, we can't get past, like, and, and, and this is my concern, for example, Brother Richard, that we see this situation right now, everybody kind of, sort of, kind of, like, upset, everybody is hurt. But then if this is going to end up being in somebody's joke in a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's going to end up in, in somebody's song. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying that that's the space that I'm thinking about. Like, culturally, are we even prepared to really deal with this fight of trying to stop this level of systemic racism, even if it comes from black hands and black bodies on right. other black hands and other black bodies? Are we really mentally prepared and ready for this? Because I, I just don't feel like we're our, we're this, we have undergone so much stress as a people in this country, especially over the past five years, mm -hmm. that I don't know if we actually have the, 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 if we are mentally and e emotionally prepared to take on this fight. Am I wrong in thinking that? I, I, I don't think so. I'll let my esteemed brother David Miller and Michael uh, respond to that as well. But I don't think we have the psychological fortitude to really take on too much more because we haven't healed. You know, and we, we don't want to really talk uh, a lot about healing because, again, it seems to be, you know, tangential or t tends not to be as critical and gets the kind of uh, optics, you know, that, you know, uh, in the street protests and all of those things, albeit important. And what Brother Mike was talking about, critical, because if we don't, if we're, we're not hitting this uh, with a uh, four prong attack on systems, budgets, policies and practices, uh, it's not going to really change or move the needle on what we're seeing uh, in the streets and what's happening to young black men. If we're not attacking systems, you know, policies, budgets, and practices in a real sustained way, then it's going to be very, very difficult to move the needle. And so my, while we are trying to get all of that together, my hope and what's happening on my end at the Black Men Health Alliance and my work with David and others is how do we really, you know, uh, expand and increase, you know, our efforts around healing. And healing has to start with self, but it also has to start in your home. What, what should we, what should most of us be doing right now? In fact, there should be a place where we can go and get real quiet, calm ourselves down. Because otherwise, you know, this is going to increase, you know, our anger, our anxiety, our stress, lead to depression, leads to suicide ideation, suicide completion. All those things are going to occur if we keep going down this path of avoiding something that's so important as healing. And healing has to, has to you have to have a regimen, a daily regimen, a weekly regimen, a monthly regimen around healing. You have to have healing circles. David and I have been involved with healing circles for men. Mm. There's got to be more of those circles for men to come in a safe place and to share their feelings and their thoughts around what they see, what they feel, and what they what the response should be. So, so for me, while all the uh, conversation around the George Floyd Act and all these other kinds of pol policies that we've seen cropping up in states across the country, I think that that has to go on, but there has to be as much energy and time focus on our healing than there is on the other things uh, that basically occur uh, uh, outside of our of the healing process. Mm, Brother David, what's your take on that? Brother Richard says psychological fortitude that sticks out in my mind and I'm, I'm in full agreement. I don't I feel like we 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 have we assume that everybody is is fully healed and ready to go to work to to push you know political agendas to push economic agendas. And I always ask people, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did anybody ask us, are we okay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like we can't just go through no moment like this and then act like, hey, man. I mean, I know we want a call to action, but we haven't grieved, like, fully yet. And so we're not okay for Raji. And, and um, I think it's okay to admit, you know, as a father of three, I'm not okay. Um, so I think that that's critically important that we acknowledge. But then I go back to we got to identify those tried and tested and true organizations that are providing a framework for healing. Um, 
you know, if you go to church and 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 they didn't and they haven't been talking about this issue, then you need to figure out another church. If they're not talking about it and figuring out ways to support the larger community, then you're in the then you're in the wrong church, mosque okay. or um or synagogue. But one of the things that I want to uplift, and Richard mentioned it briefly, is um the parents. I mean, I think that that's also a missing component to all of these discussions. What do you say to your children when they jump on their phones? Because we we are urging people not to watch the video. But in this 24 hour news cycle, you know, laced with all of these different social media platforms. And when I was growing up, Richard, you only maybe had three channels right. on TV. Right. Now you got yeah. 600 channels that the children are going to see this. The children saw white boy with his with his knee on George uh, George Floyd's neck. So part of the part of the work that we're doing is around um, creating talking points and opportunities for families to begin to have these conversations because your children are in the car and you drive by a police officer and they are afraid. Mm. And so that's another institution when we talk about the black family. You know, what are we doing with the black family? What are we doing with parents to help them have these conversations with their children? That's a, that, and, and, and for Roger, that might even be another show. Hotep, hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. Uh, some of you all saw me on for Roger Muhammad's show, The Culture, uh, today, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we talked about uh, the fallout from the Tyree Nichols uh, video being released on Friday, January uh, 27th. And we uh, dealt with healing from this trauma. And uh, we also talked about briefly, we talked about uh, a six police officer being suspended. Okay. We also have some breaking news story from uh, NBC News dealing with three Memphis paramedics uh, fired for their response to the fatal beating of Tyree Nichols. So uh, I'm going to go to this breaking news story first. Then we're going to uh, come back to the, um, then I want to come back to the story um, from, then we'll come back to the story from uh, dealing with the six officer, the six officer uh, who was suspended. He is the white officer who was heard on a body camera saying, I hope they stomp his ass. I hope they stomp his ass. Uh, let's look at this story here from NBC News. Everybody share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. Three Memphis paramedics fired for their response to the fatal beating of Tyree Nichols. Um, three, uh, three fire personnel who responded to the scene failed to conduct an adequate patient assessment the memphis fire department said on monday okay now two of them are um african-american one is white uh this, so this is uh the, the story just came out today uh this evening uh three paramedics who responded to the fatal beating of tyree nichols were terminated on monday january 30th monday january 30th after an internal investigation the memphis department uh, the Memphis Fire Department said Robert Long, uh, Jamichael San Sandridge and uh, Michelle Whitaker were found to have violated multiple department policies, were found to have violated multiple department policies in their patient response to Tyree Nichols on, on January 7th, the department said in a statement. OK, now. Uh, Michael and uh, Lieutenant Michelle Whitaker are African American. The other uh, other uh, person is white. Now, uh, the Memphis uh, Fire Department. Let's see, the Memphis Fire Department uh, said their actions or inactions, their actions or inactions on the scene uh, that night do not meet the expectations of the Memphis Fire Department and are not reflective in the outstanding uh, service the men and women of the Memphis Fire Department provide daily in our community. Now, the department uh, dispatch was dispatched to the, uh, to the scene. The uh, Memphis Fire Department was dispatched uh, to the scene of uh, Tyree Nichols 
traffic stop at 8.31 p.m., 8.31 p.m. Uh, after police called due to a, pers uh, a person pepper sprayed, due to a person pepper sprayed at the scene, uh, the department noted. Now, Long, Sand Sandridge, and uh, Whitaker were dispatched to a second location and arrived to find Tyree Nichols leaning against a police vehicle, uh, a, uh, leaning against a police vehicle 10 minutes after the call. Now, one of the questions that arose, and I was watching coverage today, and we we um, we talked about this topic generally on um, Faraji Muhammad show, The Culture, today on the Black Star Media Network, Roland Martin's media network. And it was about 22 to 24 minutes before uh, Tyree Nichols received medical attention uh, once the EMTs arrived on the scene. OK, so this is uh, uh, another one of the questions that is coming up. None of the officers provided any first aid, any medical attention. And, and according to um, uh, police chief uh, Cerulean Davis, she did an extensive interview on Friday, January 27th uh, on uh, uh, NBC News, NBC News Now, I think it was NBC News Now. They showed it on MSNBC also. So it was on MSNBC's um, website, MSNBC.com. She said that all of her police officers are trained in first aid. None of them on the scene rendered any first aid to uh, Tyree Nichols. OK, none of the police officers rendered first aid to Tyree Nichols. Now, here are the pictures of the three EMTs who are fired uh, from left. Uh, Robert Long is the white EMT. Jermichael Sandridge, uh, uh, the African-American male and Michelle Whitaker, Lieutenant Michelle Whitaker. OK, African-American female. Now, Long and Sandridge responded to Tyree Nichols while uh, Whitaker and a driver remained in the vehicle, uh, the Memphis, uh, Memphis Fire Department said, quote, our investigation has concluded that the two EMTs uh, responded based on the initial nature of the call, uh, that being a person pepper sprayed and information they were told on the scene uh, and failed to conduct an adequate patient assessment of Mr. Nichols. Okay. Our investigation has concluded that the two EMTs responded based on the initial nature of the call, a person being pre pepper sprayed and information they were told on the scene and failed to conduct an adequate patient assessment of Mr. Nichols. Now voicemails left at uh, phone numbers listed for Long and uh, Whitaker were not immediately returned Monday evening, were not immediately returned Monday evening. Sandrich did not immediately respond to an email requesting comment. The video released from the Nichols traffic stop showed officers exerting multiple uses of force against him, including pepper spray. The officers also appeared to punch, strike, uh, strike a baton and seemingly kick Nichols in the face while he was detained. The videos were released on Friday, January 27th. Now we know that um, Tyree Nichols was transported to the hospital in critical condition where he died three days later. A cause of death has not yet been released. Now police initially said Tyree Nichols was pulled over in a reckless driving stop, a reckless driving stop. They said it was a traffic violation. This is what they said initially. Now, New York Times is an article. Well, first of all, on Friday, January 27th, um, when I was preparing to be on Roland Martin's show, because I'm on Roland's show every Friday, um, I, I watched the the full interview that uh, police chief Cerulean uh, 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 Davis did with NBC. And she said that, she and 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 the investigators have reviewed all the video footage they reviewed cameras that were in that area they reviewed all the video footage and they cannot substantiate why tyree nichols was pulled over in the first place they they can't find any evidence 
of him driving the wrong way. The, the, uh, the officers initially said he was driving the wrong way on the street. That's why they pulled him over. They said it was a traffic stop. She said they can't find any evidence of um, a traffic violation to pull him over. So uh, police initially said Nichols was pulled over in a uh, over in a reckless driving stop. But Memphis police chief uh, Cyrillin uh, C.J. Davis said her office has found no proof to substantiate the claim. And she said this in the interview with NBC News. Officers ordered Nichols on the ground, giving him conflicting commands before he ran away. Officers pursued Nichols deploying a stun gun uh, on him as he fled from uh, the officers, according to, to the videos. He was repeatedly pepper sprayed before being beaten and estimated 80 yards from his mother's home. Nichols died three days later. Now, preliminary findings in an autopsy conducted by a forensic pathologist for uh, Nichols' family show he was severely beaten before he died. The family's attorneys have said uh, uh, have said the Shelby County Medical Examiner's Office has not yet uh, released an official cause of death. Now, five author uh, officers uh, to Darius Bean, uh, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin, the third Desmond Mills, Jr. And Justin Smith were fired on January 20th after uh, an administrative investigation found they had violated department policy on use of force. They had violated department policy on use of force. A sixth officer, uh, Officer Preston Hemphill, was relieved of duty, uh, police said, on Monday. Now, uh, Bean, Haley, Martin, Mills, and Smith, all five African-American police officers, uh, were charged with second-degree murder, two counts of unofficial misconduct, two counts of aggra aggravated kidnapping, one count of official oppression, one count of official oppression, then one count of aggravated assault prosecutors announced last week. Okay, so we know that this is uh, a developing story. I have a number of articles um, that, that uh, printed up on this, and I've been following this history network show uh, as well. Now, if we look at um, uh, uh, there's a couple things I want to look at. We're, we're going to go to the uh, white police officer, Preston Hemfield, um, who was uh, who was suspended today. We're going to go to that. Uh, well, we found out he was suspended. I should say we found out today that he was suspended. But I want to go to this analysis from The New York Times. Um, this is. Step one commands in 13 minutes, 71 commands in 13 minutes. Now, if you saw me on Roland Martin and filtered on Friday, one of the, uh, we were on live when the video was released. So Roland showed the video live on the air. OK. One of the things that I talked, one of the things I talked about was that. He was given a number of commands that were confusing. They tell him, get on the ground. He's already on the ground. OK, they tell him the, the, the turnover or something like that. You want me to turn over on my stomach or my back? They say, show your hands. Well, one of the officers is holding his hand and, and threatening to break his arm. You have you're surrounded by people giving you conflicting uh, commands and all giving you commands at the same time. OK, that's confusing to people. What do, you, what do you want me to do? Get on the ground. I'm already on the ground. You know what do you and and then you see that uh, the officers were in they were part of the Scorpion unit. Okay, they were in unmarked police cars. They were in unmarked police cars in some of them plain clothes. So it's like you're trying to figure out what's going on. You're getting snatched out of your car. Okay, you're trying to figure out what's going on. At no point I can't see uh, at any point. Was he told what he did that was wrong? At any point, now maybe we'll find out later through a deeper analysis of the video, but as as, as we know now, at no point, it appears, was uh, Tyree Nichols told what he did was wrong, what he did that was wrong, what was the infraction, anything like that. 
So this is, uh, once again, this is just, just, I mean, if, if there was a, a case, if there was a textbook case of how not to be a police officer, th this would be it right here. Uh, what not to do. Okay. So I want to go back to, um, this here. So 71 commands in 13 minutes. Okay. That would confuse anybody. Now, if we look at this here, a, time, a New York Times analysis found that officers gave dozens of contradictory, dozens of contradictory and unachievable orders to Tyrese Nichols. The punishment was severe and eventually fatal. So police officers unleashed a barrage of commands that were confusing, conflicting, and sometimes even impossible to obey a New York Times analysis of footage from uh, Tyree Nichols' fatal uh, traffic stop found. When uh, Mr. Nichols could not comply, and even when he managed to comply, the officers responded with escalating force. The review of the available footage found that officers shouted at least 71 commands, at least 71 commands, during the approximately 13 minute uh, period before they reported over the radio that Nichols was officially uh, in custody. The orders were issued at two locations, one near Mr. Nichols' vehicle and the other in the area he fled to and where he would be severely beaten. The orders were often simultaneous, simultaneous and contradictory. Officers commanded Mr. Nichols to show his hands, even though they were holding his hands. They told him to get on the ground, even when he was on the ground. And they ordered him to reposition himself, even when they had control of his body. Experts say the actions of the Memphis uh, police officers were an egregious example of a longstanding problem in policing in which officers physically punish civilians for perceived disrespect or disobedience. Some officers physically punish civilians for perceived disrespect or disobedience, some co sometimes called contempt of cop, contempt of cop. The practice was notorious, no notoriously prevalent decades ago. Now, Jeffrey Alpert, a professor of criminology and criminal justice at the University of South Carolina, said it was far more rampant in the 80s when I started doing police work than it was in the 90s or 2000s. Even before body cams, cops were getting more professional and wouldn't make it personal like it seemed to be in this case. This is just this is just is so far out of the norm. End quote. Now, to mitigate the potential for escalation and confusion during police encounters, today's police training typically uh, calls for a single officer at the scene to issue clear and specific commands, clear and specific commands. It also requires uh, it also requires police officers to respond professionally and proportionately to any perceived act of defiance. But the New York Times review, and let me increase the size of this here, but the New York Times review shows that officers did the exact opposite over and over. The available footage does not show any sign that the officers uh, present uh, present intervened. Doesn't show any sign that the officers present intervened to stop the aggressive use of force. If anything, it shows the contrary. At one point, footage captured uh, an officer saying, quote, I hope they stop his ass after Mr. Nichols attempt to flee the scene. Now, that's Preston Hemfield 
who we found out today has been suspended. That's the white officer. He hasn't been charged yet, but he's been suspended. When asked for comment on the officer's conduct at the traffic stop, a spokesperson for the Memphis Police Department said, quote, all information that is available at this point has been released. However, uh, know that this investigation remains ongoing. Now, the Memphis Police Association also said it could not comment. Now, that's the union. That's the union. That's the local union there in Memphis, Tennessee. The Memphis Police Association also said it could not comment because of the ongoing investigation. Uh, the New York Times analysis is based on footage from body cam, uh, from police body cam, uh, body cameras and street cameras released by the city of Memphis and synchronized by the New York Times. So they go through and lay out four key moments, four key moments in which officers punished Tyree Nichols for not complying with flawed commands. Uh, these video contains scenes of graphic violence. So confusing orders. You can read the rest of this. Uh, so they break down confusing orders um, and the uh, also, let's see, let's look at the next one. Contradictory commands. After fleeing on foot, uh, Nichols is seen lying on the ground a few uh, hundred yards away from his car, flanked by officers demanding that he give them his hands. But one of them is gripping his left arm and the other is holding his right arm. It's not clear how the officers expect Nichols to move. The third officer runs up with a can of pepper spray. You're about to get sprayed in the face. Good, he says. The others start punching Mr. Nichols in the face. Okay, these are just thugs. That's what the, the, these are just thugs. Um, orders not resisted. Orders not resisted. Two officers stand over uh, Tyree Nichols, who is lying on his side and rubbing his eyes after being pepper sprayed three times. An officer kicks Mr. Nichols in the face. Tyree Nichols appears to be barely conscious or coherent, but officers treat him as if he is resisting orders. Okay, you tell him lay flat, uh, tell him lay flat, uh, you know, just, just ridiculous. Impossible orders as well, uh, as, as was stated. Uh, one, uh, one officer uses uh, Tyree Nichols' handcuffed arm to pull his body from the ground and into a kneeling position. Then the other officer strikes him with a baton three times yelling, give us your hands. Okay. But his, uh, apparently his, uh, his hands are handcuffed behind his back surrounded by four officers. He tries to move away from the baton. Okay. Another officer says, give me your effing, your effing hands. But Tyree, uh, with one officer pinning his arms behind his back, Another gripping his handcuffed wrist and the third punching his face cannot comply. So read the rest of this here. These are domestic terrorists. 71 commands in 13 minutes. Officers gave Tyree Nichols impossible orders. Okay, now. Uh, I want to look at the that's from the New York Times. Good, good reporting, good analysis from the New York Times. And I have a subscription uh, to the New York Times. So, you know, I read the New York Times every day. Uh, that, was, that, that was from uh, January 29th, if I remember correctly. Okay, so the news came out today about, they released the name of the sixth officer uh, and this officer has been suspended, okay? And let me try to find something here. Yeah, this officer has been suspended. Preston Hemphill, this is the white officer. This is the one who said, I hope they stomp his ass, okay? Preston better hope he doesn't go to prison. Uh, Pre Pre Preston better hope he does not go to prison because it ain't gonna go too well for him in prison. I I'll tell you that right now. Once his name gets out, it, it, it's, it's not gonna go too well for him. Um. Let's look at this here. We flip over to this other article. 
Okay, now this is from the Washington Post. Okay, let me just refresh the screen, make sure they didn't update because there was an update a few minutes ago. Okay, let's pull up this article. Uh, six officer suspended. Six officers suspended in Tyree Nichols' death investigation. This is from the Washington Post. From uh, it was updated January 30th. It was uh, it's from January 30th, 2023. How's everybody doing uh, today? Uh, give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like on this broadcast. Uh, follow us on our fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. I'm Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. And uh, follow us on our YouTube channel, uh, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. All right. Uh, a sixth Memphis police officer has been relieved of duty during the, during the investigation of Tyree Nichols' death after beating by police. Now, uh, uh, Tyree Nichols' family is saying, why are we just now learning the name of this uh, officer, okay? Uh, we just found the name today. Now, he, the officer has not been charged with anything yet. And uh, Preston Hemfield was not at the second location for the second encounter where Tyree was actually arrested, handcuffed, and beaten. He was at the first location. Now, a sixth uh, Memphis police officer has been relieved of duty during the investigation of Tyree Nichols' death after a beating by police. Officer Preston Hemfield, Officer Preston Hemfield has been relieved of duty pending the outcome of the administrative investigation, the police department told the Washington Post late Monday morning. Uh, Officer Hemfield was hired in 2018. Now, Hemfield is a white man. He was relieved uh, of duty at the same time as the other five officers charged in the incident, said Kim Elder, a spokesperson for the Memphis Police Department. The Shelby County, Tennessee District Attorney's Office is considering uh, is considering charges for Preston Hemphill, according to a statement posted to its Facebook account. Now, uh, Preston Hemphill's attorney is Lee Gerald. Lee, attorney Lee Gerald confirmed in a statement that his client was the third officer at the initial stop at the initial stop. Um, and the first video was from uh, Officer Preston Hemfield's body camera. Quote, as uh, Lt. Uh, attorney Lee Gerald said. Quote, as per departmental regulations, Officer Hemfield activated his body cam. He was never, quote, he was never present at the second scene. He was never present at the second scene. He is cooperating with officials in this investigation, end quote. Now, Hemphill's, uh, Officer Preston Hemphill's body camera captures part of the initial confrontation with Tyree Nichols. In the video, uh, Officer Preston Hemphill can be seen using a taser on Tyree Nichols. Later, a voice on the body cam that seems to be uh, Officer Preston Hemphill's body cam uh, says, quote, I hope they stop his ass. I hope they stop his head. Oh, I hope they stop his ass after Tyree Nichols escaped. OK, so uh, we'll see uh, what happens here. Uh, he was at the first incident, not the second incident. Prominent civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who is representing Tyree Nichols family, questioned why it took so long for Hemphill's identity, uh, why it took so long for Hemphill's identity to be made public. Quote, why was the white officer involved in the brutal attack of hashtag Tyree Nichols shielded and protected, he tweeted, adding that he's called for transparency, but the police department has not uh, risen to the occasion. Now, the um, Memphis Police Department said they did not release uh, Preston Hemphill's name because he has not been charged yet. He has not been charged with anything yet. He's he's uh, been suspended. The investigation continues. They released the names of the five African American officers after they were charged. Okay, they were charged uh, last week. Now, uh, they said the uh, Memphis Police Department said that. Preston Hemphill's name could be heard 
in in the video one of the videos on like one of the body camera videos here's the tweet from attorney benjamin crump okay so you can check this out why did it take so long okay now uh attorney benjamin crump has called on congress to approve the george floyd justice and policing act now we talked about this today on faraji muhammad's show the culture okay so uh you'll see that video as well uh which passed in the democratic controlled house in 20 in 2021 but failed in the senate as i said on the show today the george floyd justice and policing act passed uh it was march 3rd 2021 it passed by a vote of 220 uh the 212 220 to 212 and all of the republicans in the house of representatives voted against the bill okay 212 republicans voted no for the george floyd justice and policing act after they sat up there and 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 cried and talked about how wrong it was what happened to george floyd now those coup plotters uh and q conspiracy theorists now they're in charge of the house of representatives and the, the point I was making on Faraji's show today is that as long as we make uh, policing in America, as long as we make this a black issue, you're not going to you're, you're not going to get the legislation passed that's, that needs to be passed. OK, especially with Republicans in control of the House. Then in the Senate, even though Democrats control the Senate, based upon Senate rules, it takes 60 votes to get a bill passed in the Senate unless it is uh, dealing with. Uh, judges okay then it's a simple majority 51 okay so you need uh 60 votes okay so if you have 51 democrats you have 51 democrats in the senate that means you need nine republicans okay well the black tea well, the black tea party republican uh senator tim scott he's the one who blocked the george floyd justice and policing act in the first place senator tim scott blocked the george floyd justice justice and policing act in uh the senate when you had the negotiations in uh, uh we had the negotiations in 2020 when the negotiations were going on and um republicans were in control of the uh senate this is before uh biden came in off the numbers in uh 2021 i should say i'm sorry 2021 we had the negotiations and uh uh, Democrats had a slim majority in the Senate. It was 50 50 type breaking, type breaking vote, Vice President Kamala Harris. There was an equal number of Democrats and Republicans on the committees, however. But the negotiations between Senator Tim Scott, Senator Cory Booker, Representative Karen Bass, Tim Scott comes out and lies in September of 20. Uh, September uh, 2021 and says that the sticking point was defund the police. The Fraternal Order of Police and the International Association of Police Chiefs, they put out a joint memo right around September 25th, 2021 and, say, and said defund the police was not part of the uh, George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. And they both, the, both of those police unions supported the bill. Okay, so uh, what I was saying on the show today is that as long as you make this a black issue, you're not going to get these bills passed, especially in the Senate. And there's only two and a half black people in the Senate. There's only two and a half African-Americans in the U.S. Senate. And I say half because half the time Senator Tim Scott doesn't act like he's black because he consistently votes against policies that are beneficial to African-Americans. He, he, he voted against Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson being on the U.S. Supreme Court. He voted against um, Kristen Clark being um, uh, assistant, uh, 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 assistant attorney general in the Civil Rights Division. He voted against the uh, John Lewis Voting Rights Act. He voted against the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. OK, uh, he, he blocked the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. All these things. This is Tim Scott in the Senate. Okay, now if we go back and look at this here, and there's a couple of things I want to show you. The legislation aimed the George Floyd Justice in, in Policing Act aimed at combating police misconduct. 
it would limit qualified immunity policies that protect police officers uh, accused of misconduct. It would create a national registry of sustained disciplinary actions against officers, and it would ban chokeholds and limit no-knock warrants, among other measures, okay, uh, aimed at uh, combating police misconduct. Now, the most important thing that it would do is not listed here specifically. It's not listed here specifically because it would lower the standard that you could prosecute police officers at the federal level, and it would lower it from willful intent down to uh, negligence or recklessness, however they phrased it. Willful intent is extremely hard to uh, prove. Willful intent is extremely hard to prove. Now, if we, it, uh, it goes to state of mind, and it's a, it's a civil rights violation. You have to prove that, that someone willfully intended to deprive someone of their civil rights. You have to prove that someone willfully intended to deprive someone of their civil rights. Not that they actually did deprive someone of, of their civil rights. You have to prove that they willfully intended to do it. Well, that goes to state of mind. That's hard to prove. If you lower the, the standard down to uh, negligence or recklessness, now that's... Uh, a lower bar and that's easier to prove so you can prosecute more officers and ultimately get more officers convicted. Well, um, qualified immunity, a lot of, a lot of people talk about that, but I'm not sure if people really realize that qualified immunity is not a criminal charge. It's, a, it's in civil court. It's just suing somebody for monetary damages. Nobody's going to go to prison over that. Not only that, the police union is going to help them raise money for their attorney and help them raise money for the settlements to pay the settlements. Okay. So qualified immunity should be removed, but that's not the most important thing in the George Floyd justice and police in that Lord, lowering the federal standard and being able to prosecute more police officers, send more police officers to federal prison. Which means that which means they will they will be felons now. They have a felony a felony record, okay. They can't own firearms. They can't work in law enforcement anymore. That's a bigger deterrent than being able to sue somebody in civil court. Okay, so uh, it has been crumb. Uh, the Memphis Police Association, the union representing officers, did not respond to requests for comment on Monday. Now, they've been very quiet. Now, the five African-American police officers do not belong to the Fraternal Order of Police, just so people understand. There was an article uh, from, there's an article, we talked about this briefly on the show last night, on the African History Network show. Um, last night, and I'll see if we can pull up this uh, article here. But uh, they, yeah, they don't belong to the Fraternal Order Police. So it's some other police union that they uh, belong to. But the police unions in general have been pretty quiet on this. Uh, okay, this 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 article right here. Me because I have this up in Firefox. Let's see. Let's go to this one here. here. Let me pull this one up. Okay. This is from WPLN.org, uh, WPLN.org. Uh, this is in Nashville, Tennessee. Ex-officers charged in the death of Tyree Nichols were not part of the National Police Union that typically defends these cases. This is from January 27, 2023. Um, so these African-American police officers, they give their names. Uh, uh, five former Memphis uh, police officers have been fired and charged in the death of Tyree Nichols. Now questions circulating 
uh, about how the officers are being treated and if their treatment has to do with their race. In many cases where an officer is charged with killing a civilian, the fraternal order police steps in to provide their criminal defense. That won't be the case for the black former officers who were charged in the beating death of Tyree Nichols. That's because those officers are not members of the Fraternal Order of Police, the FOP. A spokesperson, a spokesperson told WLPL News, WLPLN News, that the former officers are not eligible for legal defense because the FOP does not represent them, does not represent them as a union. Quote, the event as described to us does not constitute legitimate police work or a traffic stop gone wrong. F FOP President uh, Patrick Yoes, Y-O-E-S, uh, said in a statement, this is a criminal assault under the pretext of law. This is a criminal assault under the pretext of law. The FOP uh uh, fraternal police politicians and activists across the country uh across the state and country have condemned the officer's actions body camera footage of the incident is scheduled to be released first so we know body camera footage was released so read this article here from wpln news in nashville tennessee ex-officers charged in the death of tyree nichols were not part of the national police union that typically defends these cases okay so Okay, so we have that. Now, uh, I want to go. I want to go to this other story here. We'll talk about uh, Preston Hemphill, uh, the sixth uh, police officer. Also, if you like this type of information, many of you all subscribe to the African History Network. If you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. So says keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills. And uh, at our website, as I talked about uh, on Faraji Muhammad's show today, uh, visit our website because it has information about uh, the online classes I teach on the weekend, online history classes, and a, a free Black History Month lecture that we have coming up online February 4th, 2023, Saturday, February 4th, 2023, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's at our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Okay, let's continue here. All right, so this article um, from the Washington Post, six officers suspended in Tyree Nichols' death investigation. Six officers suspended in Tyree Nichols' death investigation. Okay, and this is from uh, Monday, January 30th, 2023. Let's go back to this uh, article here. So the Memphis Police Association, the union uh, representing the officers, did not respond to request for comment uh, on Monday. Now, you find, so that's very strange. Usually the police union has no problem making a comment, okay? When they don't want to make a comment on this, OK, it, 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 it's because they know that is nothing that they can say. That is going to uh, it, it, sometimes they're just better off just saying nothing. OK, is uh, what are you going to say? Let all the facts come out or uh, I mean, what, what are they going to say? The four videos which were edited by the police before being released tell a different story from the Memphis Police Department's initial claims. Now, there's a there's a good article from the New York Times that just came out that talks about this, okay? Um, and this is something that I've been re research, researching the past few days, but there's an article from the New York Times. We're going to go to that one in just a minute. The footage shows police pepper spraying, punching, and kicking Tyree Nichols, as well as dragging and tasering him. Now, the police department's, the Memphis Police Department's initial statement 
had described a confrontation, a confrontation uh, between uh, Tyree Nichols and the police, followed by Nichols running away. Then the statement said another confrontation occurred. The statement read, quote, afterward, the suspect complained of having a shortness of breath and he was transported to St. Francis Hospital. Now, there is no video footage. There is no video footage of the traffic stop because the officer who stopped Tyree Nichols was driving an unmarked car, driving an unmarked car that was not equipped with dashboard cameras, said Police Chief Sarahlyn Davis. Now, while five officers were fired and charged in Tyree, Nichol, Tyree uh, Nichols' death this month, the month of January, Memphis police have also suggested that more fallout was possible for, for others within the department. The police investigation has not been able. Now, see, now this is something we talked about. Um, if you saw Roland Martin and Filter's show on Friday, January 27th, that show, when when I looked at it, um, when when I looked at the views on YouTube on Sunday, okay, Sunday, January 29th. That show had been viewed over 300,000 times. All right. The, the, the initial show we did and, and Roland showed the video live. That show had been viewed as of Sunday, January 29th. It had been viewed over 300,000 times. So if you saw me on that show, one of the things I said was that um, Police Chief Davis told NBC News that they reviewed all the available video footage from cameras and in in, in, from the, all the cameras in that area, uh, the, 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 the cameras on the lamppost, whatever. They reviewed that footage and they cannot find any traffic infraction that Tyree Nichols committed to justify being pulled over in the first place. The police investigation has not been able to confirm Tyree alleged Tyree's alleged traffic violation. The officers claim he was driving on the wrong side of the road, Police Chief Davis said. Now, Police Chief Davis uh, said last week in a video statement that the five officers were the ones quote, directly, the five officers who were fired, the five African-American officers who, who were fired. Police Chief Davis said last week in a video statement that these were the officers directly responsible for the physical abuse. Uh, we know they belonged to the uh, Scorpion Unit, which stands for Street Crimes Operation to Restore Peace in Our Neighborhoods. It was instant. It was created in late 2021 by police chief uh, Sarah Lynn Davis with the goal of saturating high crime neighborhoods with police. And we know it was shut down. Uh, they disbanded that unit on uh, Saturday, January 28th, just the day after the police chief had defended the unit. Now, a spokesperson for the police told the Washington Post that because Officer Preston Hemfield, who is the white officer, because he is still under administrative investigation, they cannot reveal whether he was part of the Scorpion unit. But she added other officers within the Memphis Police uh, Department were being investigated for, quote unquote, department policy violations, department policy violations. Uh, Police Chief Davis did not elaborate on the policies involved, nor did she specify the number of officers. OK, uh, so read the rest of this. Uh, OK, uh, and the, the Memphis Police Department internal policies note that being removed from duty does not automatically suggest wrongdoing and that it, quote, should not be associated with a negative connotation, end quote. Uh, okay, so read the rest of this. Read the rest of this article here. Sixth off, sixth officer suspended in Tyree Nichols' death investigation. Sixth officer suspended in Tyree Nichols' death investigation. 
I also posted a article today from localmemphis.com dealing with uh, Shelby County DA uh, Memphis mayor speak out after a uh, sixth uh, Memphis police officer involved in Tyree Nichols death relieved of duty. Okay, now. There was a let me see something here. There was a piece that was an article from uh, New York Times. And this all is yeah, from, from uh Monday, January twenty twenty three. This one this one right here. Pull this up just a second here. Okay, so this article deals with um, the initial traffic stop and video contradicts, let's see here. Initial police report on Tyree Nichols' arrest is contradicted by videos. Okay, this is from the New York Times, January 30th, 2023. Initial police report on, Ty on Tyree Nichols' arrest is contradicted, contradicted by videos. Um, a police report written hours after officers beat Tyree Nichols was starkly at odds with what videos have since revealed, making no mention of the powerful kicks and punches unleashed on uh, Mr. Nichols and instead claiming that Mr. Nichols was the one who was violent. The police report painted uh, Tyree Nichols, 29 years old, who died three days after the January 7th 2023 beating the police report painted, painted him as an irate suspect who had quote unquote started to fight with Memphis, Memphis police officers even reaching for one of their guns now this video this body camera video you see one of the black officers say that at the end you see him say that Tyree tried to grab the other black one of the other black officers guns okay and there's no evidence of that so far but why were you still beating him after he was handcuffed? The videos which were released last week show nothing of the sort. Instead, they captured police officers yanking Tyree Nichols from a car, threatening to hurt him. And then uh, after he ran away, catching up with him and inflicting the deadly beating. OK, all the while, it appears from the videos, Tyree Nichols never struck back. On Monday, the fallout from Mr. Nichols' death continued. The police department announced that it has suspended two more officers in addition to the five who have already been fired and charged with murder in the beating. Uh, meanwhile, the, the city's fire chief, Gina Sweet, uh, fired or sweat, fired uh, two emergency medical technicians and a lieutenant who had responded to the scene saying that they all violated a range of policies. Okay, so check that out as well. And then lastly, this piece right here, this is from the hill.com. See, this is what I've been saying about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, okay? Because the bill does not defund the police. The bill actually funds the police, all right? Now, if we read this article, I've talked about this before, now, but it funds it in a good way. Uh, police organizations say failed reform proposal would have strengthened departments, not defunded them. This is from uh, September 28th, 2021, after the talks broke down and, and uh, Senator Tim Scott went out there and lied, okay, and said uh, it was over defund the police. That's why the talks broke down. Two police associations released a statement expressing disappointment over police reform over police reform negotiations ending on Capitol Hill last week after a bipartisan group of lawmakers said it had reached an impasse. The National Association of Police Chiefs 
and the Fraternal Order of Police, the FOP, okay? And I'm gonna increase the font size of this here. I want everybody to see this, okay? And the FOP are disappointed that Senate negotiators could not reach agreement on police reform legislation. And we thank all of those uh, members of Congress who partnered with us in this effort, the joint statement from the International Association of Police Chiefs and the FOP said, this is what they, this is what they said. Despite some media reports, at no point did any legislative draft propose defunding the police. It is our joint belief that the provisions under discussion would have strengthened the law enforcement profession, would have strength, strengthened the law enforcement profession and have helped improve the state of community police engagement with without compromising management and officers' rights, authorities, and legal protections. So the Fraternal Order of Police and the International Association of Police Chiefs supported the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, and they were saying it's good for everybody. It's good for police officers. It's good for citizens. Okay? And they say it does not defund the police. Senator Tim Scott lied. He said, he said, he said the sticking point in the negotiations would defund the police. No, it's not. Your ass lied. Now, on Sunday, Black Republican Senator Tim Scott, who was negotiating reform efforts with Senator Cory Booker, Democrat of New Jersey, and then Representative Karen Bass, who's, who's now um, a mayor in uh, uh, California, claimed that the bill advocated for defunding police. Senator, Senator Tim Scott claimed the bill ab advocated for defunding police. These two police unions put out a joint statement basically calling him a lie. Senator Tim Scott on CBS's uh, Face the Nation that Sunday said, we simply, we said simply this, I'm not going to participate in reducing funding for the police after we, after we saw major city, after major city defund the police. What major city after major city did you see defund the police? How many major cities after major cities did you see defund the police? Meanwhile, Senator Cory Booker, now this is, this is the part that a lot of activists don't understand. Senator Cory Booker, who's one of the sponsors of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. He said the reform would have allocated millions of dollars more to police. Senator Cory Booker said the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act would have allocated millions of dollars more, M-O-R-E, to police. Does that sound like defunding the police? Or does that sound like funding the police? Isn't that what Joe Biden has been saying? That you don't defund the police, you fund the police? And Joe Biden supports the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. He called for the passing of it. Cory Booker is saying the same thing that Biden said. Neither one are talking about defunding the police. They're talking about funding the police. But they're talking about funding it, funding the police in a responsible way that gives more protections. Quote, we want to help officers with mental health issues. We want to collect more data. So we should uh, give more resources. Senator Cory Booker said on CNN's State of the Union. This was in September 2021. He's absolutely correct because all this stuff that people want done costs money. And if you've ever been on a city council, if you've ever been a mayor, if you've ever been on a committee writing an executive order like I have for the city of Detroit, you know all that stuff costs money that people want done. Okay, read, read this rest of this article here. Police organizations say failed reform proposal would have strengthened departments, not defunded them. September 28th, 2021, thehill.com. They have a link to the letter from the uh, Fraternal Order Police also from their statement because I have a, a, I've read the letter. Okay, so check that out. Then also, let me see here.
this one um there are other articles dealing with the same thing around the same time september 28th 2021 okay but what has to happen what i was explaining on faraji muhammad's show today is that if we look at fatal force fatal force is probably the most comprehensive database on police killings okay every year more white people are shot and killed by police than african americans okay so let's look at this washington post i've been looking at this since like 2015 since they started uh keeping track of this since since this database was created by the washington post okay i'm looking at this since 2015. All right, let's see. Where can I find it? Uh... Okay. Fatal Force, 1,110 people have been shot and killed by police in the past 12 months. Okay, that's for 2022. Uh, so this was uh, last updated January 25th, 2023. So you go through and look at this here. Black Americans are killed at a much higher rate than white Americans. Oh, so this is a database. You can go in, in this database. It tells you up to date how many people have been killed each year by police. OK, see all victims. Uh, and they break it down, explore data. Uh, they break it down by category and they let you know uh, uh, whether the person was armed, unarmed. Uh, you can filter results right here, filter results, city, state, police department, uh, download data. But you can, uh, they tell you whether the person was armed, unarmed. They tell you whether there was body camera footage, dash cam footage, all of that, okay? They go through and break this down. It's a comprehensive database of uh, this deals with police killings. Now, black Americans are killed at a much higher rate than white Americans. So uh, 5.9 African Americans are killed per 1 million people each year. So uh, 1,905 killed in 2022 uh by police let me see uh the black people let's see and you're looking at uh white people shot and killed uh let's see 3622 let's see black people uh much higher rate than white americans although half of the people shot and killed by police are white black americans are shot at a disproportionate rate they account for roughly 14% of the U.S. population and are killed by police at more than twice the rate of white Americans. Hispanic Americans are also killed by uh, police at a disproportionate rate. This is um, what uh, that's not in the year. That is. What does that represent? I forgot what period of time that is. It's not in the year. I think that's I think that's looking at uh going back to 2015. Uh 5.9 million per year total. Okay, 2.3 per million per year, but that's not these totals are not for the year. I think that's going back to 2015 when the database started. But we're almost three times um we're killed at almost three times the rate of white Americans. But when you look at raw numbers, there are more white people shot and killed each year than African Americans. OK, so the question that we have to ask. Is where is the body camera footage of all the white people shot and killed by police? Where is the dash cam footage of all the white people shot and killed by police? OK, and. If that information, if those videos were shown on MSNBC and CNN and Fox News, it would greatly change the narrative. 
Because as long as this is looked at as a black issue, as long as this is looked at as a Latino issue, you're not going to get the necessary votes, especially where Republicans controlling the House of Representatives. But even in the Senate, with Democrats controlling the Senate, if all 51 Democrats vote for it, you still need nine Republicans to vote because you need 60 votes in the Senate. OK, because of the filibuster, you need 60 votes in the Senate. So what I was saying is that, that what I said on Faraji's show today is that they need to hold a Senate hearing and also a hearing in the House of Representatives. Bring in the white mothers of white people un, uh, uh, unjustly shot and killed by police. You got to change the narrative because there's only two and a half black people in the entire U.S. Senate. If you if you just make this a black issue, it's going to be easy to dismiss it. But when you start talking about all these white people shot and killed by police, and then you put these white senators at odds with people in their home state that they represent, and now now you now you change the narrative because you start talking about wait a second. This ain't just a black thing now. Police are killing white people also, and they kill more white people than us. But but as long as this remains a black issue, you're not going to get the federal legislation that's really needed. Unless maybe African-Americans of 60 percent of the House of Representatives and 60 percent of the U.S. Senate, then you'll get it. But the way it is now, no, you 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 have to change. You have to change the narrative. Now, one of the things that needs to happen is that they should take George Floyd's name off the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. No disrespect to George Floyd or the Floyd family. They should, they should rename it the Law and Order Justice and Policing Act. The Law and Order Justice and Policing Act. Don't center the legislation around a person because what happened was First of all, you had some Republicans in the Senate who said that, well, since there was a settlement paid to the to the Floyd family, twenty seven million dollars, rightfully so, deservedly so. And because Derek Chauvin was uh, tried and convicted, well, now they got some justice. So maybe you don't have to change the law. See, there some of the Republicans argument was. Yes, it was a tragedy. He was killed, but the law works because the killer was convicted. Whereas many of us were saying we want to prevent another George Floyd from happening. So you have to change the laws. So when you center that legislation around a person, if that person rightfully so gets some justice, whether you got a whole group of people who have to vote on that bill who say, well, look, it's, it's, it, it, what else you want? It, no, that, that was just a one-off. No, you don't have to change the laws. No, no. They, look, they got justice. He's look, Derek Chauvin's in prison. Look, they got money. That's, that's the problem with centering the legislation around a person. No, call it the law and order justice and policing act. Take the person's name off of it, bring in all those white mothers into the Senate, into the House of Representatives, showing pictures of their children who were shot and killed unjustly by police and their loved ones shot and killed unjustly by police and change the face of the victims of police misconduct. But as long as this just remains a black issue, you ain't going to be able to get these bills passed because you have a lot of white people in this country who even though they say, oh, what happened to George Floyd was was terrible and that should not have happened. What, what happened to Tyree Nichols was terrible. But generally speaking, they say, oh, police have to be hard on those people, have to be hard on African-Americans and Latinos because they're protecting us from them. They're protecting white people from these criminals. So they'll give them they'll give them a pass. 
Just just keep them out of our neighborhood. Just keep that stuff on the south side of Chicago. Just keep that stuff on the east side. Don't let it come over here. Do what you have to do. Keep those Negroes over there. The same mistake was made with the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And this is what I was saying on, on, on Roland Martin's show, on, on my show, the African History Network show. The fight for, for a Voting Rights Act in 2022, 2021, is a different fight than 1965. Stop trying to make this Selma 2.0 because that fight in 1965 was directly because of what happened in Mississippi in 1890 at the Mississippi State Convention, where they rewrote the Mississippi State Constitution to impose poll taxes and literacy tests, targeting African-Americans after Reconstruction ended in 1877 targeting african-americans and they were operating based upon the and see so so in alabama where selma is in alabama the alabama state constitution of 1901 codified white supremacy and it imposed poll taxes and literacy tests things like this so you're going to you you're going to see um the state these southern states these former confederate states rewrite their state constitutions to impose poll taxes, literacy tests, in some cases, like in uh, Louisiana, 1898, um, the grandfather clause. And the grandfather clause basically stated that if if your grandfather could not vote uh, prior to 1867, okay, because he was a slave, okay, then that means you can't vote. And that was specifically created, the grandfather clause was specifically created to um, not disenfranchise poor white men who could not pass the literacy test. Because you had a lot of poor white men who were illiterate who couldn't pass the literacy test to vote. So they created a loophole for poor white men who were illiterate called the grandfather clause, okay? So the reason why you needed the Voting Rights Act in 1965 is to make illegal what happened in Mississippi in 1890 and Oklahoma and South Carolina 1895 when, when all the, when, when these when these states rewrote their state constitutions and targeted African Americans. Now this article right here from Washington Post, the Mississippi plan to keep blacks from voting in 1890. We came here to exclude the Negro because the um what mississippi did was called the mississippi plan and this became the model for uh subjugation of african americans when it came to voting rights throughout the south all the other southern states adopted similar laws okay they talk about solomon saladin calhoun who was the white county judge who presided over the Mississippi State Convention of 1890. And Solomon Saladin Calhoun said, let's tell the truth if it burst the bottom of the universe, he said. He said, we came here to exclude the Negro. Nothing short of this will answer. We came here to exclude the Negro. Nothing short of this will answer. So delegates eventually adopted a literacy test and poll tax geared to suppress the black vote in a state that had an African-American majority. African-Americans were the majority of the population of the state of Mississippi as a legacy of slavery in 1890. And they changed the state constitution to suppress the African-American vote. And they did this throughout the South. So we get wiped out of the state legislatures. We get wiped out of Congress. So by 1900, the only African American left in the House of Representatives is George uh, George Henry White of North Carolina, and he's going to introduce an anti lynching bill, the first anti lynching bill. It took 122 years for us to get an anti a federal anti lynching bill passed. 122 years when it when it when it passed the House and the Senate in 2022 and signed into law by President Joe Biden. It took 100. 
in 22 years for us to get a federal anti-lynching bill. There was a silent march up in uh, there was a silent march in 1917 uh, down Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. Organized partly by uh, James Weldon Johnson of the NAACP and James Weldon Johnson was the one who wrote the lyrics to lift every voice and sing, which became the black national anthem. He wrote the lyrics to that. OK, there was a there was a silent march 1917 uh, demanding a federal anti lynching law. And that was. Uh, partly because of the East St. Louis uh, race riot of 1917 but because of the increase in lynchings that were taking place at the beginning of the great migration, where you have African-Americans moving up, up North and eventually going to move out West as well. Okay. Uh, so all this history is all connected to the di direct, directly connected to what's taking place today. And these battles we're still fighting today. So the more you understand about history, you, your understanding of politics, laws and policies, is directly related to your understanding of history. Unfortunately, one, Americans are very ignorant of history. That's how Donald Trump got, uh, they're very ignorant of history uh, and politics, which is how Donald Trump got like 74 million votes in 20, uh, 2020. But for African-Americans, a lot of this stuff, we don't understand history or law. So this is why we can't take full advantage when opportunities present themselves. And we don't understand how to turn a, mo a moment into a movement and a sustain a movement, sustain a movement, understanding that politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power and resources and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amend amendments and treaties, their adoption, interpretation and enforcement. And politics impacts every aspect of your life, from the water you drink to the food you eat, to the air you breathe, to the to the infrastructure in your city and the road you drive down the street to be able to go to work or to go to your business. So you have a lot of people who talk about economic empowerment, these economic empowerment gurus out here, things like this. I'm for, I'm all for economic empowerment. My degrees in business administration with a major in marketing from Wayne State University here in Detroit. I taught entrepreneurship for seven years, did business consulting for seven years. I'm all for that. But also I managed African-American owned companies that had government contracts for the city of Detroit, County of Wayne, the state of Michigan. So I got to see how your your economy is shaped by politics and laws. And how your business is dependent upon a healthy economy. All right. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like on this broadcast. You can support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. So your support helps broadcasts like this happen. Uh, visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, we have a free, uh, uh, we have, we have a free lecture that I'm doing to kick off African American History Month. It is, uh, Saturday, February 4th, uh, 2023. Okay. It's going to be 2 PM to 5 PM Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to deal with the. Uh, this year's theme for African-American History Month is Black Resistance. Black Resistance has been an annual theme going back to 1928. So uh, we're going to deal with uh, this year's theme um, of Black Resistance. We're going to look at Black Resistance movements uh, throughout history. And we'll deal some with the origins of uh, African-American History Month as well. Uh, Black History Month and talk about Dr. Carter G. Woodson and the... Um, Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, founded September 1915 in Chicago. Uh, so if you, you just go to our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, scroll down the website, you'll see information for my radio show, The African History Network Show, on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF, April of 2023. It'll be seven years doing The African History Network Show on this station, and it'll be 13 years uh, March of 2023 doing the radio show, period, but seven years on 9, 10 WFDF. Scroll down, we have a Cash App, PayPal information there. Uh, a 16 week uh, online class, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understand the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. 
Uh, we have a free class session for that that we that that I did uh, January 28th. So you can click right here for the free class session. You can register for the full online courses on sale, sixty dollars, regular one hundred thirty dollars. We deal with thousands of years of history, what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. But on Saturday, February fourth, uh, two p.m. to five p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm doing a free lecture, uh, online lecture at our online school. Click right here register for right now and then you'll be able to register for uh we'll also do a preview of uh, my new online class that's starting up uh it's going to start up uh saturday february um saturday february 14th uh ancient kemet the moors and the ma'a for understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school class number one will start up uh saturday february um hold on i'm, no, I'm sorry hold on saturday february uh february 11th saturday february 11th class number one will start up okay but visit our website the african history network.com then the second class that i teach uh is on sundays 2 p.m to 4 p.m from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power 1865 to 1968 and uh, we had a great class uh, on Sunday, you can register for that course right here. We do all the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. So a year from now, two years from now, you can go back and watch the entire course. OK, um, so we have uh, some free class sessions you can check out once you watch those. You want to register for the entire course. We have a bundle pack. You can register for both classes for one hundred dollars. Um, and we had a free class session on Saturday, January 28th of uh ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understand the transatlantic slave trade okay so check that out all right look we have to get out of here remember the african history network we focus on educating empowering and inspiring people inspiring people of african descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior also lastly you can um advertise with the african history network you can advertise with the african history network our current promotion buy one month uh get one month free african-american business owners also post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast we have the information right on the home page of our website below the classes uh buy one month get one month free we take your 30 second 60 second commercial put it into the rebroadcast of our various shows and into the uh on our social media platforms and into the audio podcast of our shows also we're on nine different audio podcast platforms if you don't have a commercial we can create one for you email us at 